Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. And this is actually the DCEU Daily and titled They Hated Batman vs Superman because it dared to be different. I apologise because what I did was upload today's Doctor Who Daily twice and in one of those versions of those videos I titled it the DCEU Daily. So I apologise if you clicked on that video expecting a half an hour edition of today's DCEU Daily and you got Doctor Who something you're probably not interested in because you came in for today's um, latest edition of the DCEU Daily. Anyway, we are here to talk about how they hated Batman vs Superman because it dared to be different. Batman vs Superman is not the movie they said it was. If you go to Rotten Tomatoes now, I'm sure it's still got, what, the 38, 37, 40 um, Rotten score. And you, you think about it, right? And you compare it to other films in the comic book movie Janea, and you think, well, wait, wait a minute, Birds of Prey and the, you know, the fantastical, the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn has probably got what a better, it's probably got a fresh rating, while, while BVS has got a rotten rating. And you think to yourself, how is this actually possible? Well, one thing you should know if you've never been on Rotten Tomatoes before, it's an aggregate score. It's not a fair way to measure a film. Now, my advice to you is not to judge what you should and should not see in the cinema by Rotten Tomatoes. There's only one way to figure out what you want to see. Watch the marketing, watch the trailers and decide if you want to see it. So Batman vs Superman was literally hated because it dared to be different. This is an epic, expansive experience. Actually, a lot like the June movie. But with the June movie, people got what they saw on the team. Batman vs Superman, you know, is an interesting film in terms of the marketing was kind of framed and titled Who Will Win? That's not what the film is about. Batman vs Superman, literally, Batman and Superman fight for about nine minutes of that movie. Now that is actually a long time in film time. It is, it's actually kind of a very long fight. It doesn't feel long, and nine minutes in real time isn't a long time, of course. But it's a long fight, it's an epic fight, and it works for what they wanted to do. The reason it's called Batman vs Superman, and apparently Chris Terrio and Zack Snyder didn't really want to call it that. Let's be clear here. The title of the movie wasn't the problem. The title of the movie wasn't the reason that a lot of critics and a lot of people hated this movie. It just wasn't what, the, what it said on the tin. Because all the trailers tried to frame it as mainly being, you know, a physical fight, you know, between Batman and Superman. But in fact, this is actually a little bit of a psychological thriller, you know, with Batman versus Superman. It is. Those two, char those two characters for most of the film don't like each other. But it's not just the fight that justifies the title Batman versus Superman. The dawn of justice is the dawn of the Justice League. You know, it's Superman's death that starts Batfleck on the course to putting together the Justice League. That's the whole point of that title. I personally think it's a great title. The only thing that pissed me off about that title when I first heard it was that Superman's name was after Batman's. That will never do. Naughty, naughty, naughty. And some people say that it's more Batman's movie then Superman's movie. This is not true. It is equally their movie. And I will debate and argue with that with anyone to, you know, I'm blue in the tooth. I'm sorry. Uh, it, it's not a Batman movie. It's a Batman movie and a Superman movie. And they, I think they both get equal screen time. Maybe I'm wrong. I've never measured it. But in terms of the narrative, it's both of their damn movie. So why did they, why did the people who hate this movie hate this movie well number one it was the marketing as i've already mentioned it did it did make it look like this was going to be a popcorn chomping movie it was another of the sort it nothing of the sort it's an immersive experience and there's a lot of dialogue i mean even i was shocked when i first went and see saw the theatrical version in the movie theater um I kind of was expecting the words Batman and Superman, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice to be in bold, bold letters. But there's this little piano music and the words are very small. And I think, 
This is the kind of thing they do in indie movies. Because Batman vs Superman is probably the most expensive um, indie movie ever made. It's made in the style of indie movies because Zack Snyder has a, you know, comes from historically, his origins in, you know, being a creative was from adverts and kind of indie. That's where he came from. So that was interesting. I didn't hate that, by the way. I just found it interesting. But, and we have this really immersive experience at the beginning of the film uh, where we see, you know, Bruce Wayne as a child, um, you know, burying his parents and running away and falling underground. All of that. The beautiful lie music is brilliant. It really works for me. But if I thought that was awesome, then we get to see Batman's perspective of the Battle of Metropolis. That is genius. Why is that genius? Because it means the film takes off of where the other film literally left off. And that's a really good idea. Think about the Snyderverse. Man of Steel from BVS. We kind of continue straight off the bat. And then we pretty much start, you know, David Ayer's Suicide Squad, when it's not really his Suicide Squad, but you know what I mean. Um, you know, where we get Amanda Waller saying those beautiful lines, Superman changed the world when he flew across the sky. He changed it again when he didn't. Makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand up every time. And then we get Zack Snyder's Justice League Snyder Cut, where the film fucking begins with, you know, Superman screaming. And, you know, and him and Doomsday killing each other. But this time we get to see a close-up cam shot of the other characters' reactions seeing him die and sacrificing himself for them. We see Lois's re reaction, we see Batfleck's reaction, and we see Wonder Woman's reaction. It's great from Snyder, and it, that moment is a great way to open it. So his trilogy, well, it's not really a trilogy, but it's all where we got at this moment, and who knows, probably all we're going to get. Hopefully not, but who knows. But... So each of his films jumps off from the other. So you look at the MCU, which is interconnected, but no one's ever done interconnection like that. So it's brilliant. So I think when the mainstream audience came into Batman vs Superman, because the problem is with the modern day audience, they don't have, you know, huge concentration levels. So we saw a movie with a lot of action, seeing kind of Batflex or Bruce Wayne's, you know, perception of the Battle of Metropolis, but then we get a lot of dialogue from Lex Luthor and other characters. And then we actually go to the Middle East, is it the Middle East or wherever it is, when we see, you know, when we, we see the terrorists and Superman being set up by Luthor and his goon. Um, so that's kind of exciting. But after that, we get a lot of dialogue. Now, when I saw this dialogue at first, I thought, wow, this is a really great kind of indie type character driven movie. This is going to be good. I liked what I saw. I was kind of stunned to my core what we were getting because I didn't expect this. I didn't expect this because I was sucked in by the marketing. And why shouldn't I be? The marketing lied about what type of film it was going to be. Problem number one, because Warner Brothers was scared of the movie. But I've mentioned this before. When they marketed Logan, Fox were very honest about the kind of film it was going to be. And that's the film that actually Logan fans, Wolverine fans, wanted. So it's brilliant. Now, picture this scenario. We get trailers that actually sh depict what Batman vs Superman is actually going to be. I think not as many people would have hated it, if any. Now, we know there is a preconceived idea of Snyder. Snyder's been hated by comic book fans and the mainstream audience for a long time since Watchmen. They loved him with 300, hated him for Watchmen. I think Watchmen is another fantastic immersive experience. I've only seen it once though, but it's a great movie. I mean, Snyder only makes great movies. Let's be absolutely clear. From my point of view, I'm not speaking for you or anyone else, but me. So what were the things that they hated about BVS? Listen, be clear, let's be clear. They hated it because it was different. They said it took itself too seriously and it was too dark. How can a movie be too dark? How can a movie take itself seriously? What does that, what does that mean? It takes itself too seriously. Well, I will explain to you the situation. Right, they had seen a bunch of MCU movies from 2008 to 2016. So they decided 
that this was the way to do comic book movies. So when Snyder had a more serious tone to the Man of Steel sequel, they didn't like it. They wanted gags. They wanted the chewing gum that ran out of flavour quickly. And that's how I describe the MCU and modern blockbuster movie making. It personally doesn't, you know, it doesn't cater to my tastes, but the younger generation love it. And so this is one of the reasons they don't like Batman versus Superman. But Batman vs. Superman, like it or not, and I like it and I love it, is a cult classic. How many MCU movies are now cult classics? Iron Man, Iron Man 2, and let's talk about Iron Man 2. Iron Man 2 is the MCU's BVS, it's its second movie. Iron Man 2 is one of the worst CBMs ever made. And Batman vs. Superman, the sequel to one of the best CBMs ever made, Man of Steel, is acres and leaps and bounds better than Iron Man 2. But that wouldn't be too hard. It's a great movie. We had a better second movie for our franchise than they had with theirs because everyone likes the first Iron Man, loves it. Not many people like Iron Man 2 or The Incredible Hulk. I do, or four of those movies, those early sequels to Iron Man. He was still, Fade was still kind of it, making it all interconnected and stuff which people were enjoying, but the MCU only became successful when people saw Joss Whedon's Avengers. Before that, people were going, going for Fade like DC fans were going for Snyder. So people or the company were patient with Fade because they knew behind the scenes he was working very hard to iron out the kinks. Snyder didn't see any kinks. And I agree with him. It was his vision to have a dark, compelling, serious gods and monsters take. You know, gods and legends take on these DC characters. And ultimately, a lot of the graphic novels are like that. Not all of them, but a lot of them are. Snyder has a certain way of making movies. Now, for me and many of us, it worked. And let's not forget that critics don't actually, they, they don't have any experience of being on a set writing a movie. There's some people like John Campion who used to work in the industry, but he's just a, fa he, he failed in the industry and that's why he's got a YouTube channel now. Now, I have been to Hollywood, I spent six months there, I'm developing the first English speaking dramas here on Cypria TV. I write, direct, and star in my own place here in Cyprus. So I know a lot about what goes into creating something. No, I'm not a Hollywood legend or a superstar or famous apart from here in Cyprus. But the point is, I understand what it takes to make a film. So these people who vote films up or vote them down have no idea, no idea what makes a great movie. And the point I'm making is, that so many different movies make great movies. You don't demand that a DC film is like an MCU film. That's ludicrous and that's why they hated it. I mean, let's look at the hate that Chloe Zhao's, uh, am I saying her name right, Chloe's, let's just call her Chloe, Chloe's Eternals movie is getting. These are the people who shill the chewing gum MCU movies that runs out of flavor quickly. But when someone actually makes an immersive experience, which is what The Eternals is. Now, I've had the huge privilege of watching it early. A lot of you are still waiting to see it. But I saw it and I enjoyed it. It has flaws. Most of those flaws, I believe, are because of Kevin Feige's insistence of false feeding humour in there and, lead, you know, trying to lead, lead in to the other movies and extend, extending the arc for that phase. And I think that's the problem with Eternals and the rest of it, which is mostly Chloe, has made a beautiful movie and it works. Now, I know some people are put out because some of the characters have been swapped around in terms of, you know, LGBT, LGBTQ characters. And I know people are triggered by that. Personally, things like that don't trigger me. Now, I understand the industry try and weaponize these things. And I understand why maybe you're a bit angry and thinking, hang on a minute, why can't we create an original superhero team 
that's transgender, gay, part of the LBGTQ community. Why can't we do that? Why do we have to take iconic, legendary characters and change um, how they identify? And I agree with that. But this is what the industry does. It weaponizes these things and it uses the LGBTQ community, minorities and women to do it. They're weaponizing these people. And then when there's a bit of blowback, because the blowback usually isn't that people are transphobic or homophobic. The blowback is that people have been reading these characters all of their lives and you've changed them. That's where the anger comes from. Not hate for these communities, but the media and the studios switch it up to make it look like you are a transphobe, that you are, a, that you are homophobic. And I know that most of you that are kind of frustrated about Eternals and what they've done with it, it's nothing to do with hate to, to these groups of people. But of course, I understand how it works. But anyway, you know, basically Chloe, Chloe Zoe's, um, I think that's how you say her name, but Chloe Zoe's Eternals is a very different movie. It's unlike any MCU movie you will ever see. There's not as much action. Uh, people have complained about the action. It's very character driven. It's very dialogue driven, a lot like BVS. So the critics have decided to vote it down. These are the reasons they're voting it down. Because it has too much story in the first act. And they're trying, they've got too many characters. I don't think that's a justification for voting a movie down. Are you that... I think I've discussed this the other day. That are you that dumb that you can't take lots of story beats and threads? You know, they're called the Eternals. So they're immortal. So you need to do the flashbacks to hundreds and thousands of years in the past. That's the whole point of these characters. You knew this was what you're going to get. But again, Eternals is being voted down by critics because it's different. Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice was voted down because it was different. Because they wanted that movie to be a mini pre-Justice League movie with bright colours gags and maybe Batman and Superman having a little bit of a tete-a-tete, -tete, you know, but no, no big deal. What Batman versus Superman actually is, is commentary in the world we live in today. Some, you know, people hate what they don't understand. This is what Kevin Costner's Jonathan Kent tells his own son Clark Kent when he's a young boy in Man of Steel. That's what Batman versus Superman is, that people hate what they don't understand. I'm not saying that people who didn't, didn't like this movie are thick or stupid. What I'm indeed saying is that instead of kind of looking at the film and saying, well, this is different. This is not what we got in the marketing, but this is an interesting take. This is great setup. But what this film does and what Zack did in his DCEU movies was focus on each film, but still lead into what his big plans were. It's all there. All you have to do is focus on the movies, all three of them indeed, that he, where he was headed. You know, he deconstructs Superman and Batman, but he reconstructs them. And they pretty much reconstructed by the end of BVS. But in his Snyder Cut, in his Justice League movie, he totally reconstructs Batman. He's positive now. He believes in faith. And Superman isn't completely reconstructed. No, because in the second Justice League, we were going to basically be focused on the nightmare future where he's corrupted by the anti-life equation and dark side but in the third movie he was going to be redeemed and reconstructed totally and he was going to lead a meta-human army against dark side and the new gods that's beautiful and this all fell away and this triggered the public because they didn't have the nuance the vision and the patience to be patient with this film series because the films are great Please believe me, they're great. Yes, from my point of view, but they're great movies. And as I say, you know, especially BVS. BVS is now a cult classic. It must be a special film to have that, right? To have so many people love it. Without BVS, people wouldn't have fought for the Snyder Cut. The reason we fought for the Snyder Cut is because, you know, there was loads of strands there that he was going to continue in the Snyder Cut, and they're not in Justice League. And I think I may have mentioned this yesterday, just changing the subject a little bit. Why did they drive Snyder out of the DCEU? It's interesting that Ava DuVernay, we spoke about this yesterday, said that her new Gods movie wasn't being made because of another movie, which is basically the Snyder Cut. 
I don't believe her. I think she's lying. But I just think she's not a very good creative and they didn't like her pictures for the movie. But anyway, is it feasible that Zack Snyder got sacked so Ava DuVernay could make new gods because if he used Darkseid, maybe she... I don't know how it works, but then she couldn't use Darkseid and the new gods. Interesting that Darkseid and the new gods aren't in Justice League, but they're in the Snyder Cut. Why aren't... Why isn't even Darkseid? In, in Justice League. Think about that. I think it was so they could push Zack out and give Ava DuVernay free reign to make her new Gods movie. How utterly toxic. Imagine swapping an icon like Snyder for a mediocre talent like DuVernay, who's more political than creatively cre creative with her stories. We know what she's all about. But anyway, they didn't win. Snyder won. And we helped him to win. So be proud of that. I remember going to see Batman vs Superman, as I've mentioned, and coming out breathless. I was emotionally drained. I wasn't ready for the negative reactions I was going to get. In fact, I did a video on a previous channel, which I can't even find anymore. And it, I think it got about, you know, 20k views. I stood there defending the movie very passionately. I think that's the largest video I've ever had. I did try and port it over to this channel. Never worked out for me. Never mind. So I was a fan of Snyder since Man of Steel. And the point is, they hated the film because it decided to do something different. You know, BBS isn't different because Snyder wants to be different. It's how he makes his films. That's the whole point. But this film is a wonderful movie. And it was heartbreaking seeing Justice League. It was depressing after I saw that film. I was thinking, what do I do now? How can I support this franchise anymore? And then you know when you're on the floor and something motivates you to get back up again. And then I kind of started reading stuff that there was a Snyder Cut. Someone, you know, in Wales, I think, releases release the hashtag release the Snyder Cut. We all start doing it too. I start my YouTube channel, this very channel you're watching right now in 2018 and I haven't looked back since. No, it's not successful, but I have a great time making these videos and, you know, communicating with you lot, which is great. I appreciate the 30 or 40 people who come in and support these videos. So Chloe is feeling the heat and Fag's feeling the heat that Snyder and Warner Brothers felt. That's the thing here. That, this, you try and do something different. It's a bit like the ugly duckling, isn't it? You know, the story of the ugly duckling isn't that the duckling's actually ugly. They call the um, duckling the ugly duckling because it's different. The duckling's different. So Snyder's BVS isn't ugly, isn't as bad or, or bad at all like they say it is, but they think it's ugly. They think it's bad merely because it's different because it's not a mainstream singing or dancing piece of chewing gum that runs out of flavor quickly. And that was the whole thing. And as diehard DC fans, you hated it as well because they don't agree with the direction because apparently Batman and Superman should be inspirational. Batman shouldn't kill. You know, the whole thing about Batman killing ne never got me. I never understood it. I've mentioned that on this channel so many times. I just didn't care. I got it that this was an older Batman, that he'd lost a lot, sacrificed a lot, he was bitter and twisted, and he found someone in Superman to take it out on. But also, some of the points he makes against Superman are actually quite kind of logical. This is an alien with the powers of a god. He says it to Clark at Lex's party. And, and, and I, like, I, I like that conflict between them, it's true. You know, and I think that's an interesting scene. Because I don't think Batman or Bruce is totally wrong about Superman. But Superman is a good person. He's trying to do a good thing. But it's like all good people in life. Sometimes bad, negative, bitter and twisted people whose lives are not as happy and as successful as others try and manipulate those people to see life like them. And this is what Lex Luthor is doing. It's great commentary, by the way. He tries to make Superman and Batman bitter and twisted and, you know, hateful as he is. And he nearly succeeds. But good always overcomes. And the common goal that these two men have, 
that they both have mothers. Not both with the same name. That's not the point here. That Batman realises that Clark Kent has a human mother. So he must be alright. He's begging for her life. Because, because I think at first when, you know, you know, Superman's saying that they're going to, you know, they're going to kill, save Martha, or whatever he says. And I, I'm sure Bruce, that, Bruce at that moment says, yeah, but my mum's dead. Why are you saying her name? Why did you say that name? He's confused at that time. Then Lois comes in and explains everything. It's not that they both have the same name, but there are key elements there that is, you know, that is key. Because if he doesn't hear the name Martha, then maybe he actually finishes off Superman and kills him himself. That would have been an interesting thing, right? If Batman actually murders Superman, then Batman brings him, you know, helps to revive him in Justice League. That would have been an interesting take as well, but that's not the take they wanted to go in. Snyder didn't mind um, Batfleck killing the odd criminal, but I think Batman killing Superman may have been a step too far, even for Zack Snyder. As I say, if you haven't seen the film, give it a chance because it really is something special and just remember everyone and people who are not dceu fans and fans of the snyderverse never hate something just because it's different if it's not to your taste and you want to critique it constructively then that's great but don't hate it because it's not like the mcu something you know not being like the mcu is actually a good thing not a bad thing i think so because the MCU's all right, don't get me wrong. But it's not fucking Shakespeare, it's not the Godfather. And you know, I'll say this as well. You know, Fake's done such a good job with his two Spider-Man movies that he's bringing back two OG Spider-Men. And what's everyone talking about? The OG Spider-Man instead of Tom Holland Spider-Man. Nobody gives a shit about Tom Holland Spider-Man, apart from a few fangirls. What does that tell you? I was watching the Raimi's first Spider-Man and it's so magical, the chemistry between Kirsten Dunst and Tobey Maguire. William Defoe actually talking to himself in a mirror, playing different versions of himself. It's brilliant. I love it. You know, one's kind of supposed to be Norman Osborn and the other one's supposed to be Green Goblin. Who are you? You know who I am. You've always known who I am. No, no, it's brilliant. It's fantastic. Because films used to be made by people who were passionate about creating art and stories and escapism. And Zack Snyder isn't like the rest of these idiots in the industry, these nut jobs. He actually cares about telling an immersive escapist story. Yes. He makes it gritty, and there's lots of lots of realism, especially in BVS. But you can still watch that film, you know, the ultimate edition, and escape from your life and problems for three hours. He's one of the best directors who's out there. I think he's as, you know, he's our Spielberg and George Lucas right now. Now, not many people want to admit that, but he is. Just wait till he does Rebel Moon. Everyone's going to want him to write and direct their movies. And hopefully, he gives them the finger. But Batman vs Superman isn't a mess. It isn't a terrible movie. It's a piece of immersive, classic movie making. And you'll never see a comic book movie as rich in depth and real life commentary and great fantasy and visuals. You will never see a comic book movie as good as that. This is about a director really going the extra mile. I mean, a great example of that is the nightmare sequence in BVS, which none of us really knew, because it comes in out of context, and the mainstream audience are like already, what's this? This doesn't make no sense. And the critics, this is crap. What are you doing here? You knew he was making a Justice League movie. All you had to work, do is wait for the Justice League movie to put it so everything's in context. But you didn't want to do that. So ultimately, the critics and the mainstream audience destroyed the Snyderverse. And it's sad, isn't it? Because the people who love it lost it. But at least we'll always have those three movies, which I always tell you guys, which makes things really, really special. And Batman versus Superman was a time when 
Warner Brothers just said to a director, do what you want. Now, they got scared, admittedly, even cut half an hour of that movie, but that's still Zack's movie. It's just missing that half an hour, that vital half an hour, admittedly, but ultimately, the drop-offs in the second and third week convinced them that he needed to show his movie. Thank God for that. But then we had to get another extended edition with the Snyder Cut because they did, they did worse this time. And it's all about fear, everyone. Because it is DC versus Marvel in live action. And Warner Brothers want to make more money. They want the DC extended live action universe to be the best and the most loved. And that means catering to the mainstream audience. It also means sacrificing a storyteller's vision. And that's not right. And that's not fair. What I'm hoping to see in the future of this multiverse strategy that we can get chewing gum, popcorn chomping movies, but we can also get films like Snyder's Vision for these DC characters and DC universes. This has been the DCEU Daily. I met your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wives. Please like, share, comment, especially subscribe. So important. Spread the word. Smash the notification bell so you never miss this perfection. And I'll be back tomorrow with even more DCEU Daily. Now, again, I apologize that I, I uploaded the same Doctor Who video twice, and one of those videos had the DCEU Daily on them. I was not trying to clickbait you. I genuinely thought that was the video I was giving you. So be a little bit forgiving. Everyone makes mistakes. And I'll be back tomorrow with more DCEU Daily. Until then, goodbye.